So I've got this table in Excel and a query base on it where I'm just calculating the angle by adding in a custom column using Power Query into the table. I've already got the uh, cabinet height, cabinet width, cabinet depth, and now I've got this angle as well that I've got, which can be very useful for me. So I'll switch over to Visio and I'm just going to start a new drawing. I'm going to do it in metric units because I'm here in the UK at the moment. And let's just go and change the page setup. I'll have it as uh, meters and I'll do a drawing scale of 1 to 50 because I'm going to be doing a comms room floor plan. I'll go to a page size actually. I'll go to print setup and do landscape. That's 100%. Page size, notice that it's changed here as well. I do OK and apply. I could switch on the um, ruler and the grid lines if I wanted to, but I'll just leave them off for this purpose. All I'm going to go to now is to insert a rec data record set. So if I go into uh, my custom import screen here, I choose Excel workbook, and I'm going to go to that particular workbook that we've just been looking at. And now I'm bringing that in, and it's now examining that workbook. And I'm going to go and choose the particular table or query in there. The first row does contain column headings. And I'm going to have all of those columns. And I'm going to have all of those rows that you can see there. Now, I'm going to actually change this to be the cabinet name, because I know that's unique. The record number might change. Um, I'm going to leave it like this now. Right, finish. So I've now got this external data record set in here. And you can see that it's got all these columns that are coming through. And included in that is the width and the depth. OK, now I'm going to go to home and I'm just going to draw a rectangle. So that rectangle that I've drawn just there, if I look at the shape data, sorry, task pane here and bring the size and position up, you can see that it's 1.75 meters. I just happen to have done it 1.75 meters at the moment. But I need that to be referencing these dimensions here. So the width will be the actual width of the shape. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Uh, the cabinet depth is the height of the shape and the angle will be the rotation of the shape. So I'm just going to take one of these records here and drag and drop it on to that rectangle. Uh, I've got too much in my data graphics. I'm just going to edit that data graphics, go to data, advanced data graphics and do edit. OK, and uh, just uh, delete those. Uh, I actually just want in this new item, which is going to be the cabinet name here. And that's going to be text bar. I just want to show it in the middle somewhere. So let's choose something appropriate. I don't think I need a border on that. And I'll choose it to be center in the middle. OK, I'll get rid of that one there. And when I do OK now, we can see I've got the text within there. I'm not quite sure what font size I need. I'm just going to leave it for now. So uh, how do I get uh, the height and the width of the shape and the angle to be matching what's in this table? What I need to do is go to the shape sheet. So you can go to the developer tab and do show shape sheet, or you can do a right mouse click on that shape and go show shape sheet. But you must have the developer tab switched on which you just go to customize the ribbon and ensure that this is ticked under main tabs. OK, so now that I've got that, I'm going to go to show shape sheet in there. And there's no need to be afraid of the shape sheet here. I'm just going to go view and arrange all so you can see this a little bit more. And I'll just minimize that so you can see the shape over there. And over here, we can see the shape sheet of that particular shape. And we can see here is the width that I want to be equal to the cabinet width value there. Right. So I'm just going to click into there. And if I go in and just type in guard, because I don't want it to be 
accidentally changed. Now I could go and start typing in prop dots because it will use these shape data row names or I could just go and click on the cell that I want to reference it. There we go. And now I need to add on to that a text string which is millimeters because Visio is default of inches. You saw immediately that the shape changed. Now I'm going to go to the height, type in guard again, open that up. I'm going to touch on to the depth and again add in millimeters and we've got the depth. All that remains now is the angle to go guard and go down to the angle here and I am going to also add into that a deg for the degrees because the default in Visio is radians. So now I've got a shape here that will change according to the row of data. So the next thing I want to do is just go into my more shapes show document there. I don't need that rectangle. That's what I started with. I'll get rid of that. I'm going to take this one over there, drop it onto there and press F2. I'm going to rename this as cabinet. So now I've got a cabinet shape and I can go and select here a number of these rows. I've got the cabinet highlighted, selected and select. And now you see here I've got different um, values showing. I can quickly go and arrange these. So these ones, you can see the text is pointing down because these were at zero degrees. All right. And if I go down to the next two rows here, which are also well, three rows are on, on this level. I can just go and do that and see how they're snapping and get adjacent to the shape because I've got the snap to geometry on and I've got snap to grid off. Now I'm going to go down to the next ones here. Here we see, look here, we've got 0201, all these ones. They're showing here angle 180 degrees. I'll just take a few for now and drop them down. And we can see the text now is upside down, which tells me that they are rotated. And we can see the rotation angle is also there. And I've got a few over this side, which I know are going to be a different angle. So I'll just show you how this works. And down here, some which are 270 degrees. I'll just go and select a few of those, drag and drop them down. And we can see that these are now rotated at 270. Now I'm just freely placing these but they are to scale and I actually do have the dimensions from a sketch where I can put them the right dimension apart. So here we can see very quickly how we've now created cabinet shapes that respond to the width and the depth or the height of the shape, whichever you want to call it, and then the angle of rotation. It saves me a lot of time in, in actually just dragging down a record, making sure I get it the right dimensions and then maybe bringing in a record and out, dropping it onto there. I much prefer to have something which has got a master and all of these shape instances. They're all now responding to that uh, because it's now a master. I could, if I wanted to, go into here and then do a fill, make this nice, close that. And it'll update all of them because they're all instances of that master. So that is how easy it is to link the data to a shape so that you can get it changing its size and its rotation.